Our society today is creating and consuming a lot of data. On average, every day, every individual in our country, and I am talking about from babies to your 75-year-old grandma who's on Facebook, by the way, touches 26 gigabytes of data, equivalent to 15 DVD downloads and a new set every day. Let's face it, data will keep coming. And to most of us, it's not all that exciting. Do you remember seeing a report like this and having to crunch the numbers? Or a pie chart where its parts don't add up to its whole? <laughs> yeah. So I think we need a better relationship with data. As human beings, we all appreciate beauty, like the beauty in nature and art. So can we transform the face of data and make them something that we can appreciate? Can we make data beautiful? I asked my six-year-old daughter to write numbers from 1 to 100, and this was what I got. You think it's beautiful only if you were the parent who was using child labor for her TEDx talk. <laughs> I asked her again, and this time, let's use 100 objects, by the way, her favorite snack, to make an art. So now I see context, interesting characters, and almost emotional content, princess trapped in towers. <laughs> so I think we can make data beautiful, and my theory is by telling relevant and meaningful stories. At the TEDx conference, you take out your phone and wonder if you're sitting in the blind spot. Time to take a nap, open signal. It takes real-time telecommunication data and maps it onto geographic areas. The wireless signal strength is visualized. Red indicates stronger signal than blue. Service providers are ranked based on the data of their signal coverage, speed, and reliability. Look. Downtown Dayton is 45% better than the average U.S. cities, and we have a great number of cell phone towers nearby. What a great location for a TEDx conference. <laughs> Time to send out a tweet. Speaking of Twitter, it is truly a global data exchange. A scientist invented TweetPing. It marks every single tweet with a small flash at its location on the face of the planet. Two hours of time. The world has already sent about a quarter of a million tweets. It is noon in US and afternoon in Europe, and people are being very productive in their offices <laughs> with the Twitter. <laughs> Look at South America. People are loving it. They're even doing it in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. Africa's GDP is 80% below the world's average, and only one out of six people has access to the internet, but they are tweeting. Look at Japan in the far end. It is past their midnight. Most of their Twitter users are 24 years of age and younger, and they are not sleeping. <laughs> Two hours of time, 250,000 tweets, one visualization. Your eyes are getting tired. Time for some vitamin C. Well, speaking of superfoods, how do you know what is working and what is not? This data visualization shows some potential health benefits of certain foods. The size of the bubble indicates the level of interest or popularity. So let's first take the scientists' view. They have found good evidence. Omega-3 in fish oil is associated with better appetite among cancer patients and lower risk to heart diseases. Sounds great, right? Is everybody taking it? Let's re-rank the data by the public's popularity. Oh, it's hard to see fish oil and everybody falls in love with coffee. <laughs> they have found a promising evidence that coffee is associated with better breathing function, um, better health in general, lower risk of the Alzheimer's disease, and the lower possibility of depression. Hey, you know what? Evidence or not, you've got to have it. <laughs> now, loaded with the caffeine, back to work. Speaking of the workforce, 
If you love innovation, you are at the right place. Our city of Dayton is famous for its technology generator industries. We have 26% higher industry concentration rate than the national average. Our high-tech job multiplier is 5.2. That means for each job we create in this category, its impact will lead to additional 4.2 jobs. So in total, five jobs added. And in the next few years, our high-tech job growth will be 9% to reach 9,000 high-skill, high-wage positions in the city by 2016. Great innovation, more jobs. They just make you feel so happy. <laughs> Are you happy, my friends? Yeah. Dayton has happy people. 97% of our TEDx participants said we're very happy, we're happy. In terms of gender difference, well, not much difference. Female and male are equally happy in our sample, but when you stretch the data across dif different age groups, something interesting is happening. Hey, young adults, while you approach the legal drinking age, guys become happier, but not the ladies. <laughs> Life goes on. <laughs> we get older, we get married, we have kids, and now ladies start to feel a lot happier. <laughs> Well, men kind of, you know, dropped a little bit to the bottom. <laughs> is, is there a thing called midlife crisis? <laughs> so men finally catch up. They reach the highest point of happiness around age 65, and eventually we all come to the mutual perception of happiness. So if this... <laughs> Why arguing with your spouse, right? Um, so if this is a picture of TEDx Dayton, how are we doing as a country? Well, the United Nations ranked 156 countries on happiness. On this map, green means happy, red not. So US came in at number 17. Denmark claimed to the throne, and this is not their first time. Well, you know what? People say um, health has a lot to do with happiness. Switzerland the number three happiest country in the world is the world's number one for quality health care and the lowest government spending on health care. <sighs> so, <if, laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you wonder if, if every country is the world's number one for something, what's there for U.S.? Seriously? So much about our mental health? Or probably the mass media. Or maybe your thoughts are just running wild with all kinds of data. Take a break. Experts say if you want to succeed, sleep more. Wait, uh, where is your music? Come to Live Plasma, a visual music search engine. <laughs> How about In the night, the stormy night, away she flies. The now you can finally sink into your musical paradise. <laughs> Effective visualizations empower our thinking. They give us new capabilities to see insights. And data, the most important evidence, can be transformed to meaningful and relevant stories for better communication. It takes you and me and everyone to make data beautiful. Stephen Field, an expert in business intelligence, once said, numbers have important stories to tell. They rely on you to give them a voice. <laughs> 